the role of mutual aid in the COVID-19 crisis. March 2020 marked the beginning of a new stage in the history of world societies that could be described as revolutionary, although not in the traditional sense of social progress. This new scenario has been characterized by the emergence of a virus, the contagion of which has overwhelmed governments around the world. For the first time in history, an event is truly global in scope. Not even the two world wars within which there were always neutral zones in which the logic of war did not operate, managed to determine the course of world history. COVID-19 seems to have done so. The main consequence of this situation has been the establishment of a regime of confinement for the vast majority of the world's population. Social isolation, safety distance, closure of public and private places of, of assembly have been only the most important measures with which governments and international health agencies have tried and continue to try to eradicate mass infection by the virus. This confining regime has made social isolation an almost permanent reality in our daily lives. Where once there was social interaction, today there is a need for distance. Incidentally, this new reality has served to make us aware of the social dependence that exists within our daily lives, thus destroying and passing what Marx called Robinsonates, which is nothing other than the idea of the self-sufficient individual. For, for this reason, daily life has had to be transformed. We have had to transform it together. How to organize our work, transportation, care of children and the elderly, leisure, this radical new reality, the first event that has occurred is the abandonment of many of the old logics of capitalist society, or what could be called our capitalist life. In order to fulfill a need, or to solve a problem, pre-pandemic capitalism always seemed to have a solution, almost always mediated by the profit, the creation of a market with which to regulate any need or any problem. However, in the world of confinement, a large part of the concrete practices in which this logic is deployed have had to disappear, forced by, this, by a state that in most cases has only carried them out without being absolutely convinced that the solution is the quarantine of capitalism. It is in this context that relationships based on mutual aid have emerged. This new form of social, social relationship or of, of social logic has been characterized mainly by spontaneity. Without the need for external organization to organize all the needs of daily life, the growing need to establish social ties of all kinds, and with all kinds of people has begun to develop. Thus, many people have discovered themselves, themselves talking to the neighbor for the first time in their lives, despite sharing a wall for years. Others have felt the need to help the most vulnerable people, started with the elderly and their difficulties in leaving home for food. Others have felt the need to continue sharing the work or to enhance their hobbies, creating podcasts, YouTube channels, etc. However, the most interesting aspect of this spontaneous emergence of mutual support is the one that has to do with self-organization to supply what the state could not provide. Neighborhood organization, or even organization at the level of neighborhood communities, has developed as a way to reach where the authorities could not. In the absence of authority, anonymous people have continued to need what the state used to provide. The groups helping the homeless who have been especially vulnerable to the spread of the virus. The groups helping women victims of gender violence, offering places where they can stay during the confinement, far from the abusers. Or the aforementioned groups for the elderly, making up for the impossibility of living home, are just some examples of this spontaneous solidarity. The first consequence can, that can be drawn for this movement of spontaneous solidarity is that the pandemic has demonstrated a greater vulnerability of the state and of capitalism that could have, have been imagined. Although the daily routine of our lives seemed to show every aspect of our social life was organized and controlled by these two institutions, the fact is that a virus with a capacity for lethality that is not too high has managed to bring the normal activity of states and markets to screech and halt. The confinement is nothing more than the way in which these two institutions demonstrate that they are facing an unprecedented problem and to which they cannot find a clear solution. One year later, the limitation of capitalism is shown, for example, in the current dependence of 
from private companies to obtain the vaccines needed to vaccinate the entire world population, which do not seem to understand the immense social responsibility they have. Faced with this, the world's institutions seem to have no choice but to insist on it. Otherwise, they cannot cope with the virus. However, it would be a mistake to understand this weakness with tendencies towards the disappearance of the state and capitalism. It would also be a problem, and a very big one, to understand the mutual aid that has spontaneously emerged in this last year as a sign of a point of no return, from which to start building horizontal social relations based on solidarity and cooperation. The main reason for this danger is that horizontal relationships seem to disappear as soon as confinement is disappearing from everyday life. As Western societies overcome the peaks of the crisis, we see how the need to share with one's neighbor, to be in solidarity with the one next door is disappearing. What was essential months before, the need for no one to be left without the necessary care, seems to disappear as the possibility of a private life is reopened. In other words, as our daily life returns to normality or the new normality, these social relationships seem to disappear from the whole of society's relationship. Mutual aid appears as something that only makes sense when there is no choice but self-organization, when the state and capitalism are once again capable of providing solutions to everyday needs. This is simply, it's simply a matter of observing the general level of involvement of these Western societies in everything that had to do with collective and communal self-care during and after confinement. This experience of everyday life that shows that there is a kind of generalized feeling that mutual support, probably named with other words, is only necessary in a moment of exception. There is even the phenomenon of reappropriation of mutual aid that fascist or other organizations, leaving aside the fact that during the 20th century there have been all kinds of organizations that have tried, often successfully, to supplant the role of the state where it could not or would not reach the mafia in southern Italy, the drug cartels in Colombia, the church in South America, etc. In the given context of confinement, many fascist groups have wanted to supplant the role of the state by becoming the institution that solve basic needs. Inspired by the Italian Casa Pum movement, these organizations, more and more numerous throughout Europe, have managed to present themselves to many people as the solution to the basic needs of housing, food, or heating. Although such movements hardly fall under the category of mutual aid, among other things, because they always leave out of the solidarity concept a large part of the population of a country or a neighborhood, for those people who receive help, these movements become a source of legitimacy much greater than the state. In other words, if anarchist type mutual support seeks to be the practical demonstration that it is, it is possible and necessary to build a counter power to the state and to capitalism, this type of organization demonstrate that there is a way to build that same counter power, but with very different intentions. This is how 21st century fascism is built. Thus, the experience of confinement and the crisis of COVID-19 raise a question. Why did mutual aid emerge in a moment of exceptionality? And why was it generally abandoned as soon as the possibility of private life returned? Perhaps this form in which social relations based on mutual aid have been materially constituted teaches us a certain limitation of the classic concept of mutual support. Outside the militant sphere, it seems to emerge indeed under an anarchist form, that is to say, spontaneous, immanent, inter-hierarchical, solidary, horizontal. However, its development seems limited to the situation in which there is no alternative either self-organization or survival disappears. Shouldn't anarchism, both theoretical and practical, ask itself as cruelly as possible whether mutual aid is an effective tool of social transformation? Put another way, if relationships based on mutual support do not seem to occur outside situations of exceptionality, if they seem to disappear at the very moment when a return to normality becomes possible, how can we understand the emergence of mutual support in such context? Anarchist theory, especially the more classic one seen from Kapotkin, seems to understand mutual aid as a kind of relationship that already exists in society, even in humanity, understood in its most abstract and idealistic form. 
However, a crew examination of the facts, which does not even have to be particularly deep, but can arise from one's own individual experience of everyday life, shows that mutual aid is not a kind of generalized social relationship. Rather, it is that which arises when competition and authority have to be suspended. Thus, we can draw some lessons from the COVID-19 crisis for anarchism. Even if mutual support seems the best way in which a human society should conduct itself, the fact is that we are far from the point where horizontal and cooperative relations are close to being hegemonic. Anarchist theory should also understand that it's necessary to know under what conditions mutual aid arises and why such hegemony has not been achieved, even when, when that which opposes, opposes it, competition and authority, seems so contrary to life. It depends on answering these questions to make mutual aid a rule and to let it remain the exception. Thank you.